structure and associated accessory structure located at 5200 Route 28 in Mount Tremper within the R1.5 zoning district. The following materials were received for review. Applications for area variances, area computations, email from Larry Molinsky dated 4-28-14, listing variances required. Referral memorandum from the Shandaken Planning Board to Shand Shandaken ZBA dated 4-3-14. Town of Shandaken ZBA minutes for regular, months, for regular monthly meeting 4-16, uh, 2014. Survey map. Recommendations. The ZBA, in considering area variances, is required to measure the variances requested by balancing the needs of the applicant benefit against the needs of the community detriment. 
The Ulster County Planning Board is concerned that several of the requested variances are likely to operate to the detriment of the vehicular and pedestrian safety both along US Route 28 and on the site. The objective of the ZBA working with the applicant and the New York State Department of Transportation is to achieve safe access. Parking areas will need to be re-examined and parking will need to be removed from areas where site distances are obstructed. Channelized access from curbing and asphalt to New York State Department of Transportation standards for commercial driveways will also be necessary. Additionally, if any parking, landscaping, or material storage is proposed in the state right of way, a use and occupancy permit will be needed to obtain from the New York State Department of Transportation. In examining the variance requests, the Ulster County Planning Board suggests that the CBA consider the variances substantiality against the bulk requirements for uses in commercial zones located along US Route 28 to give it a clearer picture of the degree of significance of the variances being requested. It's also apparent that the site plan approval will be needed to accommodate the changes in the project. Toward the end, toward that end, we strongly urge the planning board and the ZBA to work together to ensure that a safe and attractive site is the ultimate outcome of this process. Required modifications. The ZBA, working with the Planning Board and the New York State Department of Transportation, will need to develop safe access and adequate parking for the site. Particular attention needs to be focused on the location and the amount of parking, as well as the need to allow relatively high speed traffic onto the site in an efficient manner. Only if a site plan is developed that provides for the safe environment for both vehicular and pedestrian traffic while at the same time meeting New York State Department of Transportation requirements should the minimum variances necessary, necessary to establish said site plan be granted. And it's from Reviewing Officer Robert Leibowitz, Principal Planner.
several years ago, I was in uh, there was a subdivision of this, and we created lot one with an old cabin onto it, uh, 3.00 acres, and lot two which is 25.90 acres, which is all up on the opposite side of the Lost Grove uh, Brook. I think it's up going up the mountain. It was approved as two lots. What we want to do now is recombine those two lots back into one lot, um, which will then have a total acreage of 28.916 acres. Now, is this your property or is it? I'm representing the, uh, oh, okay. it's, uh, it's owned by three brothers, Kurt Paul and Dean Wilson. Uh, the reason, from what I understand, is that the, the cabin has to be deemed not livable, which if you stepped inside of it, you would deem it that. But it has a kitchen. So according to our regulations, as long as it has a kitchen, it's considered a livable residence. Okay. And you can't have two on a Okay, but yeah, but there's, I don't even know, unless they, he's been before you, somebody for a building permit, I don't know whether he has or not. Can that be addressed at the time that he builds as opposed to now? But there's no yeah. house on this one, is there? Right. No. So he doesn't show up the closed house, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what their plans are for the cabin. I believe he does plan on tearing it down, but you know, I would think that would be something that could be addressed at the time he applies for a building permit. Or what was the reason he had you talk to us a couple years ago to make I'm that sorry, small? What? what was the reason for him to make that small lot last time? Originally it was I think for mortgage purposes. He did he does want to build onto it. He wants to build on that side of the stream. And I think he wanted to just have a mortgage on a smaller piece as opposed to having a mortgage on the entire large parcel. And now, you know, between the brothers, they had some issues over where the right of way was. And I think he decided, because if you notice on the old subdivision I showed, we actually left a 50 foot strip of property over against the remaining lands of his brothers with a, also an additional 50 foot right of way. I think there became an issue over that right of way being there. The brothers wanted, if he was going to do it, they wanted to put it over on the other side. So if he ever did do anything with the back parcel, they wouldn't have a driveway that was coming across near there up there. Okay. So it just became easier for him to combine the whole thing and go ahead and get a mortgage on the entire parcel if he has to. Now, I'm not sure about this part. If he subdivided it and now we're putting it back together, it can't be subdivided again. Well, no, I don't. I don't know about that. I think that it can be subdivided again oh. yeah, at a later date. I would think it would have to be brought back under and go through the whole process. Again. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's right. That's just the there no regulations. Yeah, I, I, I know. There's no intent really for him to ever build. It would be a major issue to get a bridge across the stream, and it is steep. And he really has no reason to do anything with that back acreage other than to just keep it kind of forever wild, or whatever you want to call it, yeah, refer to that, yeah. because it's, it'd be very hard to do anything with other maybe, you know, for a cabin or something. I don't really get the access to the floor. Yeah, I don't you know, it's a shame you had to go that way in the beginning. Right around the circle. Oh, yeah, we got to go around. <laughs> <Yeah>. Big circle. <laughs> I don't see any problem. Just a little bit of adjustment. I don't see any pretty further thing that we need to do. I guess you're going to have to file with a mylar at the county. So, you have a mylar made? No. I was going to wait. I didn't know if you wanted it. I want to make sure uh, we're going to be a nurse or anything else addressed on it. Do you want to 
clean it up at all as far as the, what you got crossed out here? Uh, maybe you can bring map. me some new map if you want, if that's the only change. Yeah, I can, I can erase that off the original. That's up to you. Yeah. And then uh, the mylar, <coughs> you drop the mylar maps off with that. Okay, so you tell me we have to go through another meeting then. Okay. Okay. Uh, I guess, do I hear a motion then? Uh, I'll give a motion, yeah, just to approve. To approve this? Yes. Okay. Now I know initially when I handed in the, the application, I had not heard back from them with the addresses of all the brothers. So I did redo that initial front sheet. So that the uh, with additional information on it, I think I made ten copies. I think that's how many we had before. And as far as fees go, what, what will the fees be? Yeah, that's really, uh, no. None of us know that answer. Oh, so you're right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to get back to you on that. If you don't mind. Okay, yeah. Can you call the building department. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I just want to notify him. Get the so he gets the yeah, they, all the brothers are in a different state. The one I'm dealing with mainly is in Pennsylvania, and they're all over the place. So. Aye. Okay, what else am I going to have to do? I need the other brother. I need all the brothers to sign this. I'm going to have to mail it from one to the other to the other. So it's three different states oh, wow. until it makes a certain one that's back to us. As long as it's back here, what, within 60 days, is it? Whatever. Well, you can get it back. I'm down. I'm down. Overnight. If you can get it <laughs> yeah. back 10 days before the next day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we went this way. We'll make sure we get back as soon as I can. All set. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very you. much. about I, we were confused about that we thought he was you know absorbing this landlocked lot and does he have plans that he dropped off because he told me he had construction plans so he wants to build a house on this lot and it's in the flood zone uh, flood zone a uh, but uh, According to the regulations now, from what I understand, when you want to build in the flood zone, you have to get approved to the planning board. Um, I tried to explain to him he has to have an elevation certificate, um, but he didn't get one in time for tonight, so there's not no way he's going to be able to make a decision on it. 
on the map, I show you uh, that it's in zone A as per the uh, FEMA map that we're legally supposed to be going by right now. And that zone A does not have a base flood elevation. It's not determined yet by FEMA. So what they basically tell you at that point is to take the, uh, the, the uh, latest information available, if you can find some, or take a um, figure, the first floor should be two feet above the uh, highest grade next to the, uh, where you want to build. So that's where it gets tricky because the latest up-to-date um, information that FEMA has is the new FEMA maps that we're not supposed to use yet. <laughs> so that's where it gets confusing. Now the new FEMA maps do have a, a base flood elevation and that is uh, 1,097 feet. The uh, grade right where the proposed cabin is, is 1,072.9. <laughs> so he's going to have to have a first floor about 24 feet high, according to that. But we're supposed to go by the old maps, not the new ones yet. So it's that's a controversy. <laughs> so I think he's got to get that cleared up. So is 1097 the elevation on the old map? No, that's on the new. That's what the, on the what new does map. the old map say, though? What does the old map say? It will not. It doesn't give you a base flood elevation. They don't have to have it determined. So when you ask them about that, what are we supposed to do if there's not a base flood elevation? They say, find the latest study that you can find on the elevations in that area, and if there is none. It, the first floor needs to be two feet above the, the grade. Well, if it's two foot above the grade, he's fine. That's a simple, that's a normal foundation, right? Yeah. They're saying two foot above the, the virgin ground. But when you think about what, what is the latest information uh, study, the latest study that we have in that area, that would be the new maps. Yeah. So. <laughs> Is this in A zone or AO? Uh, this, on, on the maps that we're supposed to go by, it's in the A zone. On the uh, new maps, it's in the AE zone. Yeah. Because I, I have something here from FEMA that says that the two feet specification is for AO zone. Well, that's, that's the answer that they gave me when I asked about this situation. So I think he's going to have to get a, a more clear definition from FEMA as to, because 24 feet just seems but, um, So as far as the plan, what we have to direct him as to what you... I would, uh, you're representing Mike Dunn, I would, I would contact FEMA. I would call FEMA and say to them, uh, you know, we have a situation that came up and we would like to have determination for them. Last time you mentioned that you wanted to see PERC tests uh, to show that this place could uh, accept it. Well, he, he's going to have to have his health department requirements, you know, he's going to need per test just to get his permit. So sure. that, that, yeah, that the you And is he going to be able to build a septic field in, in I mean, is there a spot on the land that's not the floodplain? Uh, so that we might have to even get a variance from the health department. So do you wait for the health department before you give approval of any kind? No, we need, we need the health department approval before we can say yes. What is the new FEMA map? The entire property is going to be under many 
feet of water, yeah, including some, his. There's some sections of town where you're, you're going to find that, and there's other sections of town where people make out a lot better. It's, it's, but yeah, it, it's the same. There's the end, it's the same on Route 28, the other side of Route 28, uh, in Mount Tremper. Yeah. So does FEMA give any indication of when? The transition will take place? No. Well, have we accepted the new FEMA maps now? Have we adopted them? Or are we still work off the old ones? We're not, a, we're not, they're not legal yet. Yeah, FEMA yeah. hasn't officiated them yet for, for use. That's what I thought. So then you're, you're going to try to work off of the old maps? Is that what you're saying? I mean, that's what makes sense to me. Well, but I guess you, you might want to contact them. That's the thing. I mean, it, it, the wording is very tricky because if you go by the latest study, then you have to go by the big maps. <laughs> that makes sense. You just ask them if they want you to, to use the new map so specifically. Yeah, but it's a new map with an official study that <laughs> hasn't been adopted. I think as far as they're concerned, I mean, they're finished. I know this piece of property and I know it's a tricky one. Uh, are there any other issues on here that? But if he meets all the setbacks, it, it, it will be okay. Yeah, those, uh, I would, uh, setback lines are on there somewhere. <laughs> I would, uh,